Welcome everyone, my name is Sunset Vista and today's tutorial will show you how to get the upgraded Stormbo in the Eisendrak. A very simple and quick tutorial, all we need first is to craft the Wrath of the Ancients bow in which you can find my tutorial linked down below in the description. So once you have that, let's get to work. Step 1 requires us to use the Wrath of the Ancients bow to shoot the weather vane near the pack punch Come up to the vein, charge your boat holding the R2 button and shoot the vein. This will make the vein spin around and cause the wall to crumble underneath it, exposing an arrow. So go ahead and pick the arrow up from the ground and that is step 1 complete. Now we need to light 3 bonfires around the map using the bow. The first bonfire can be found to the left hand side of the clock tower. This is mostly a trial and error step so keep shooting the arrows until you light the bonfire. Once the bonfire is done, then we can move on to a second one. Bonfire 2 can be shot from the KRM-262 Warby just outside of spawn. Now the trick to this one, since it is a little tricky, is to line up your shot in the dead centre of the bonfire, then move your crosshair straight up until it is in line with the small mountain to your left. This can take a few tries, but once it's been done, then we can move on to the final bonfire. For the final bonfire, you will need to take the teleporter over to the rocket site. Once at the site, just on this hill here, you can find the bonfire. Again, this one is a little tricky, so a lot of trial and error, but once done, you will notice that the meter in the top left has now filled a little bit more. The next step requires us to be down in the pyramid room, so I'll meet you there. Once we are down in the pyramid room, we must activate the anti-gravity to complete this next step. To do this, we need to stand on 4 stone plates on the floor. Standing on the plate for a few seconds will cause a blue light to be activated. Once this has happened, then go ahead and activate the other 3. Once all 3 have been activated and the anti-gravity has started, we need to run along a set of wind symbols on the wall. We have to do this step without touching the ground. If you do touch the ground, then try again. If the anti-gravity goes, then you'll have to wait until it automatically activates again. If done correctly then the icon in the top left will fill it even more. And now that's done, we are on to the next step. Now, the next step requires us to fill 3 jars up with zombie souls. Each jar will take around 5 zombies to fill and you can use any weapon to complete this step. So, jar location number 1 is in the clock tower right next to bonfire 1 and it can be found right under these stairs here. Once 5 kills have been done and the souls have stopped being absorbed, we need to approach the jar. Hold the R2 button to draw back with our bow and this will cause the end of our bow to absorb the lightning spark from the jar. Now I recommend doing this step when you have one zombie left at the end of each round, after a nuke or whenever you can do it without being hit. Once we have drawn back the bow and absorbed the lightning on the end of it, walk outside towards the first bonfire and shoot it again with the lightning arrow. If done correctly then the bonfire will now have swirls of electric bellowing from it. If you miss your shot, just go back, draw the bow next to the urn and try again. Once done, then we are on to Jar 2. Jar 2 can be found in the small room above the double tap perp machine. Again, following the exact same steps, get yourself 5 kills so the souls are absorbed, wait until it's safe and clear and draw the bow next to the jar to absorb the lightning. Then walk yourself down to the KRM wall by, aim to the centre of the bonfire, straight up until you're in line with the small mountain and shoot. Again, if done correctly, it should now have electricity bellowing from the bonfire. For the final jar, we need to head back down to the rocket site. The final jar can be found inside next to the rubble. Same steps apply here also, so get your kills, grab the lightning from the jar, then walk yourself outside and shoot the bonfire on the hillside. Once this step has been done, the meter in the top left will now be filled even more. For the next step, go back to where we shot the weather vane originally and I'll meet you there. Once you approach the weather vane, you will notice it to be on fire and spinning erratically. On the ground next to it will be a cloud of smoke. Go ahead and press the action button next to the smoke and the arrow will flow up towards the vane before being dropped back down. Once it has been dropped back down, then go ahead and pick it up. 
The icon in the top left will now be filled entirely and we can head back down to the pyramid room to complete the final step. Back down in the pyramid room we need to approach the chest with the lightning symbol on it and press the action button to place the arrow inside. This will also reward you with a max ammo. We now must get kills in front of the chest so the zombie souls are absorbed into it. All the kills in front of the chest will be absorbed and you can also use the Wrath of the Ancients bow to complete this task. Once the chest has stopped absorbing souls, go ahead and approach it. Pressing the action button on the chest will place the Wrath of the Ancients bow inside and in its place will appear the Storm bow. And that's all to it guys. You now know how to easily upgrade the starting bow to the Storm bow on the Eisendrak. I'll upload tutorial for the free remain upgrade so stay tuned for that. But if you have enjoyed today's tutorial then feel free to leave a thumbs up, most importantly show your love and hit that subscribe button and until the next tutorial from this side of the sunset, peace out.